Uh, you'll notice the pivot table tools, very similar to the options you have when you're using pivot tables in, in Excel. Again, the power pivot um, is where we click on the, the, the power pivot option, and we'll start digging into what's behind the scenes here. So if I go ahead and click on power pivot window, that's going to open up, kind of take me into that, that data engine and that uh, power pivot engine that I was referring to in, in the PowerPoint slides. So if I go over here to the left, this account balances. This, in essence, is pulling from the J.D. Edwards Financial. It's a query that was on top of the, uh, the GL, the account balance file, linked to some of the other tables that are applicable. Um, so this is kind of pulling a lot of that stuff that you might see there, the row flags. This is where we define our different relationships for what roll-ups does each object account fall into. We set up some generic period and year uh, buckets to, to manage and be shared across the different contents. So when we're pulling data for a specific year, we can have that reflected amongst the different modules that we're pulling data for. We're doing some calcs here for those time-based measures. In the sales detail, we've got here the breakdown of coming right from the JD Edwards sales uh, module as well. Within each one of these, if you want to, to see, we're at the, the home here before I show you one specific table. There's also a diagram view. So within the diagram view, when you pull in multiple sources of data, and again, these can all be come from different data sources as well. So one could be coming from, and in our case, we've actually pulled some of these in a spreadsheet and kept some of them from, uh, from J.D. Edwards. But um, so the diagram view kind of brings in the different tables, and then you can relate the tables on, on what the common ground is uh, amongst them as well. Let's go back to the table view here for a second. If I go to the account balances and um, go to the design, you'll see an option here for existing connections. So if I'm actually connecting to different sources, those active connections would be available there, my existing connections. We'll do that in a minute. Also under table properties, I can click on that, and it'll actually pull up that statement that I was telling you about. So I have to log in. So if you had, when you do this, and if you know a specific SQL statement, you can drop that in. Or in this case, uh, with SQL Server, you can go in and define the different relationships. And that's kind of what we've done here is selected the fields. We'll go in. Um, but this is where you can go in and, and modify that, that content. So I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to kind of uh, hop out of here for a second. Before I do that, though, one thing with, you'll notice here when you're in the Power Pivot window, there's a refresh. So if I'm on this tab, I can go ahead and refresh this content on this tab. At that moment, it's not going out to that underlying data source like JD Edwards and bringing back the most current data into my report. So every time I'm clicking on something, it's not necessarily going back to the transactional source. It's actually it's on when you determine when that refresh is. So in the case of financials, if you were doing anything financial related, you might want to go open up a, a one of these reports, hit refresh, bring in all the data, and then do your slice and dice because it's now static data until you actually go back and tell it to refresh. So that was just an option when you got one table selected to hit refresh. Um, you can also get the drop down refresh all that would actually in essence go across the board and refresh all objects that are within your source.